All right, today we're going to be installing this Lowrance PDRT-WBL transducer. Uh, we picked this one up at our local Bowdoin Marine in Atascacita for 80 bucks. This is not a through-hole transducer, but a shoot-through-hole transducer. So we don't have to cut any holes in the hole, and uh, it's designed to literally just shoot through the hole and get you a good reading. You're supposed to be able to get readings at all speeds as long as that portion of the boat is in the water, unlike the transducer we have on this one now that blanks out about 7.5 miles per hour. Um, it comes with an external temperature sensor, so you have to run that separate line to the outside uh, to get you an accurate temperature. Um, now, since this is a shoot-through hole transducer, you need to make sure before you buy it that your hole does not contain metal or wood because it will not work if that's the case. And if you're at the part where you're installing the hole, if it has any kind of flotation material, you know, insulation in it, you'll have to cut through the top part and remove that insulation and install it to the bottom part of the hole. Um, still won't go through the hole, but it, you'll have to remove part of it. Luckily, uh, this Trident uh, uh, TR-186 doesn't have any, uh, any wood or, or metal in it, so we should be able to just go straight through. Plus, all the insulation is towards the sides and not in the middle where we're going to be installing it. So that'll make things a lot simpler and easier. Uh, to install this, we're going to need a fish tape, some electrical tape for the running the wires. We're going to need a drill with some tips uh, to remove anything that might be in the way. Like for this case, uh, we've got a, uh, a battery charger and a shelf that we have to remove as well as maybe some hoses to get out of the way so we can get a nice flat spot to put it on and sand it down. And when it comes to sanding, we're going to try to use this belt sander. Now we get a nice flat spot that will be sanded down pretty well. The installation manual calls for 100 grit sandpaper, but we're going to go with 120 on this uh, uh, belt sander. That way it's not too aggressive um, and we don't do any extra damage. But I'm hoping that it'll give us a nice flat spot and even uh, sanding job. But also you need to keep it a little rough as well because uh, you're going to need that roughness to get the epoxy to adhere to it. Um, and the same thing with the transducer. The transducer, the bottom of the transducer is real slick too. And so we'll want to kind of rough it up with the sandpaper as well to allow the uh, epoxy to adhere to it as well. Uh, it does come with the epoxy in it. So you don't have to purchase any unless you want to buy a certain brand that you prefer. Uh, but uh, it should be hopefully pretty simple to install. It just might take a little work to get everything out of the way first. But uh, we'll see how it is. Well guys, sometimes what you plan just don't work out. I was hoping to get you a nice install video of it, but uh, the uh, space that I had available and... and uh, the camera angles and stuff just wasn't good enough so I went ahead and just wanted to give you all a rundown of what all we did. We pretty much started here at the helm and uh, ran our fish tape down through that crack all the way back down to the back of the uh, to the boat. Had the fish tape come through there, got it here, took our uh, transducer out and uh, taped it up to the uh, to the fish tape and pulled it back to the helm. Made sure we had plenty of slack in there, and then I was able to uh, get down to the bottom of the hole where it was you know I could find a flat spot, and uh, I was. Uh, I was hoping I could use that belt sander, but I just didn't have enough room for it. So I just went with a regular little palm, a manual palm sander, just because you, you know, like I said there wasn't much room to move around with. So, but I was able to get quite a bit off. Uh, then you go through and, and get a, uh, you know, I used a shop vac and vacuumed up all as much dust as I could get. And then I went down there with uh, paper towels and uh, rubbing alcohol or acetone, whatever you whatever you have to use to get it nice and clean. Because you don't want a bunch of dust and debris and, and uh, particles down there, you know, when you're dealing with epoxy. You want to make sure you have a nice clean surface for the epoxy to adhere to. But, uh, you know, I, I used the epoxy that came with it. 
uh, you know, mixed it up real good and, you know, it applied real easy. Uh, it gives you plenty of time to get it set where you want it. And I used a pair of pliers to set on top of it because with, with those new wires, when I took them out of the box, it was pretty rigid and kind of wanted to move on me quite a bit. So when I got it set in place, I put a pair of pliers on it to give it a little extra weight and hold it down and uh, let it cure overnight. Yeah, it does. I think it does requ uh, recommend to let it cure 24 hours before moving the boat. Um, but uh, it looked like it's set up pretty good. And uh, we'll take it out on the water and get it checked out. For the temperature sensor that came with it, we actually, uh, you can see it's a separate wire that comes off of it. And we ran it through here and, and out through that boot. And worked it way down to the existing, uh, the existing uh, transducer. And we actually connected the the temperature sensor to the uh, to the old transducer. And we're just going to keep the old transducer in place in case, you know, for emergencies or if we decide to go to use that other style transducer back, it just made sense to leave it in place. No reason to get it, get it out of there. But uh, I, was, I was happy with the install. It wasn't too hard. It wasn't that big of a deal. Um, you know, just just took a little st stretch of my arms and getting to the bottom of this thing. Like I said, I don't have much room in here. Some boats you can pretty much sit down in there, you know, they give you so much room in the back, but just not this one I have. But uh, hopefully this gives you a good idea of, you know, what it takes to, uh, to mount it, put it in place. And the next video will be me on the water with it and we'll see how good it is. All right, guys, we're out here on Gibbons Creek Reservoir today to try out this uh, shoot through hole transducer. Uh, my old transducer would blank out about seven and a half miles per hour. Let's see how this thing does. up to five and a half. Well, we got up to 30, 30 something miles an hour and it didn't skip a beat. So I'll have to test this thing out some more and see how fast we really can get it going without it skipping. So uh, until next time, see you later.